Hello, welcome again. This is your agronomist, Farm with Fred. And today I want to take you through a process of preparing uh, growing media uh, before sowing the seeds. As you all know, uh, things have changed, technology has changed, and we do we no longer do uh, we no longer do the the ground nursery or the nursery that we are used to do. We raise our seedlings differently, as you can see. This is how we raise our seedlings. Uh, and there are so many advantages associated with this kind of raising of seedlings. One is you will have a good germination uh, percentage. Another one, you will be able to raise a, a good and healthy seedlings because one of the spacing, you cannot be able to space your seedlings uh, in this manner when you are doing it on the ground. So the, uh, that's an advantage of lacing your seedlings this way. You also be able to uh, to lace your seedlings in a uniform manner and uh, you'll also be able to time your seedlings uh, to the exact date that you want to plant it. Because if this is a controlled environment, this, they are growing under greenhouses and we are encouraging farmers to construct their yeah, small unit or a, a, a small greenhouse where they can lease their seedlings because like I've always been telling you, this is business and it's business from the beginning to the head of it. We don't need to make mistakes when we are starting so that we can have a, a swift uh, growing season. And today... I'm ready to show you how all these professional seedlings are raised or how you are supposed to do uh, to raise your seedlings at home. One, you are supposed to be having a, 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 a different things or the things that you are supposed to be having. One is a growing tray like this one. Uh, I'm using a recycled one, it's a old tray, but you are supposed to be having a, 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 a growing tray. We have different sizes of these trees there are some that has handled uh, uh, cells growing cells there are others that have over 400 so it will depend by the one the, the one that is available in your area so uh, the tray uh, also what matters when when selecting the trees or the things you consider selecting the trees is the, the spacing of these holes if it is for vegetables like tomatoes like cabbages and like kales we use this type of tray if it is for the uh, tree like popo like uh, like other uh, tree varieties we use another tree that is of a bigger spacing or of larger spacing but with the same same procedure that I'm going to show you today so one you need a tray and a tray uh, is must be polar on the lower side this allows water, excess water to come through this place. So if you buy a tray that has no holes on the bottom side, that is not a good tray and that is not a recommended tray. The next thing you're supposed to be having is cocoa peat. These are the growing medias that I use. You're supposed to be having this cocoa peat. You have this cocoa peat. Some farmers tend to use cocoa peat alone without mixing with other product which is very okay now the dangers of this one you have to keep on controlling water because it holds quite a good amount of water it's like a matlis or like a bread once you dip it in water there is that amount of water that it holds so this one you have to be very professional and very keen when you're using cocoa peach alone and today I'm introducing to you all, I'm using uh, another product known as Vermacurate. These are the two growing media that I'll use for today in order now to show you how to prepare a, a, a good nursery or a good growing, uh, growing seedlings unit. So, once you have this thing, another thing uh, you should be having or you should also create a controlled environment like the one we are in. You can do a greenhouse, a wooden greenhouse. You see, it's very cheap, affordable uh, poles and uh, affordable trees in your area. 
If you don't do a, a greenhouse like this one, you can also construct a shed net. A shed net is also a good place to, to raise your seedlings because one that are controlled environment, free from from diseases, free from pests, and also the temperatures inside there because uh, seed drinks requires a certain uh, amount of temperatures or a moderate temperatures. So that is the biggest reason to why we construct the greenhouses and the and, and the shed net. So for don't it have the, these things or don't uh, come to prepare your nursery the, the and it you leave your seedlings the outside, the uh, outside but, uh, the, 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 uh, the, plant the cold have, and the uh, higher the extreme temperatures in the, the outside. Uh, that will fungal. be an, a, dis, a disadvantage to the seedlings uh, and it won't be as good as what I'm taking you through. So once you have these two growing me medias, like this one by the way for uh for cocoa peat cocoa peat is a, a byproduct of coconut as you can see this and uh, uh, is it's extracted uh from coconut and uh cocoa peat uh we have two types of cocoa peat that is currently in the market we have treated cocoa peat and untreated cocoa peat untreated cocoa peat comes in blocks so you have to come with it and treat it because it's a uh, uh, summer saline. You have to treat it using a uh, uh, calcium based product in order to reduce the salinity. Treating is now reducing the salinity. And once the, 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 the EC is, of, is good, you can sow your seedlings. But if you fail that, you plant it without treating it, you'll end up killing your, your seedlings because the EC is very high because of the salinity. You all know that coconuts are grown in coastal regions and uh, uh, in most cases the coastal regions have high salinity water and high salinity soils so, and the cocoa peat comes with that high salinity. So you make sure you control or you minimize the, co the, 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 the salinity levels. But the cocoa peat that I have today is already treated and I can use it, it as the way it is as per now. We also have another product apart from cocoa peat known as peat moss. It's a very good product. It's, it's a seaweed extract. Extract. We also uh, mix it with vermiculite or you can use, use it uh, alone. The reason why we are using this vermiculite in, is, in, is because in order to increase uh, or to balance the water that the water holding capacity of this cocoa peat. Like I told you, it holds a lot of water and it can be very dangerous. So when you mix it with vermiculite, verm vermiculite increases uh, air elution in the media and also balances water retention in the media to avoid excessive holding of water and thus reducing fungal infection when the seedling is growing. And now uh, mixing it in the tray, you will measure your 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 vermiculite. And at the moment, I'm using a ratio of one vermiculite into one vermiculite into three cocoa peats. So you measure it. Don't mind my the size of the container. Um, it's just for for practical purposes in order to show you how it's it's measured. Don't mind the size. So you measure. You measure it that way. One is to three. So after that, this is just for class training. Uh, for those who are doing commercial, you are doing a lot of seedlings. You will need to have uh, a bigger container in order now to make sure that uh, you get the good leashes. You can use a bucket in order to measure it well. Like I told you, it's a ratio of one, one vermiculate to three cocoa pits. So it's a ratio of one is to three, then mix them well. Point to note before mixing or well mixing, you can wet 
that uh, your vermiculite you can wet your cocoa peat before mixing or you can mix them dry and after putting them in a tray do the watering so in either way you choose it's the best method and it's a good method uh, for you to uh, to do it or to practice so mix it well then take your tray you fill the tray this way This is how we, we do, uh, we fill the tree, the cells, make sure all the cells are filled well. You fill the cells that way. how we fill our tray we fill it that way now this tray is ready it's very ready for uh, for sowing the seeds now before you sow the seeds you need to make uh, the planting holes and these are the biggest now the most challenging part of uh, of our seed sowing because if you use your your finger to make holes, some holes may be deeper than the others, some others be maybe shallow. So in order to have uniformity, and remember we don't have a, a machine to do that, in order to have uniformity, we take a similar tray of the same size and place it, place the cells just adjacent to each other. And when you place it down that way, you make good sewing holes, very uniform. As you can see, they are very uniform. And now, this is where we are going to sow our seeds. I've always been telling you uh, seeds are supposed to be sowed at a depth of the depth of sowing seed is supposed to be twice of each devil seed. So with this, you are able now to know uh, uh, where to place the seed and to get a good depth. So from there, we go to the next point, which is seed sowing and covering. Now, uh, after making the holes, have the seeds ready as you can see uh these now the size like uh now i'm doing the tomato uh seeds these are small the seeds are supposed uh, are supposed uh, to be or how the seeds are now this is the most tricky part because you're supposed as small as they are you're supposed to drop them one by one in each a devil cell of the of, 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 of the tree so remember, we made holes, so you come dropping them, that way, you drop the seeds one by one, it's supposed to be, to be a job, uh, that needs a very sober mind because of this dropping. Like at the moment, uh, seeds are being sold in seed count. So if you drop two or if you you may, you lose one, you've already lost money in them in that. So 
dropping is supposed to be that way you drop the seed that way in that manner cell by cell Make sure you don't drop too. And due to advancement of technology, calendry, uh, with commercial farmers, everything is mechanized. Dropping of the seeds, making or mixing of the cocoa pit and vermiculate, and even covering them. But uh, for the sake of the small scale farmers and farmers who are not doing uh, commercial kind of farming, small scale farmers. This is how you're supposed to do your seedlings. This is how you're supposed to uh, to do uh, your nurseries. Then, after dropping the, 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 the your, your seeds, you cover them lightly. Remember, I told you they are supposed to be covered twice the size of the seed, so it's a light covering. Light covering. You cover them lightly cell by cell make sure you cover them well and from that from that uh from that your seedlings now uh, your seeds will be ready, you'll start counting uh, the, the germination days. Uh, they takes in between three to five days for them to, to germinate. But uh, from after covering them well, make, make sure you water your seedlings. The first watering you can use a knapsack, the one that you use to spray, to water them to make sure, uh, because if you use uh, just a normal can, the, 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 the watering can, you may unhard the seed or you may destroy the seed, you may remove the seed because of the big droplet from the water can. So using the, the knapsack or a small uh, pump, watering them could be a very good uh, means of watering them as per this stage. So because like I told you, you are already in a, a protected uh, unit, you just place your seed in a well prepared in a well prepared uh, prepared benches like the ones that we have here and the only thing now we are waiting for is watering them on daily basis depending by the demand of water and are waiting for germination i hope this has been an exciting lesson a good learning experience invite other farmers subscribe to this channel so that we can continue learning together. Bye.